Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to start clapping in real life whenever you want to restart something now. Just say something in a conversation and be like. So, um, I just wanted to introduce what we've decided our topic is going to be for the next eh, eight weeks, I guess. Um, we are going to be discussing the blueprints that Jesus Christ laid out for us when it comes to following the way of the cross. And where do these blueprint prints come from? The well, Beatitudes! Yes! Um, but yeah, the Beatitudes, we're going to go through um, Boom Chakalaka, the, yeah, the blueprints Christ has laid out for us um, to grow in holiness and to maintain our vision for heaven. Um, and each week we'll discuss a new one. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you gain some wisdom um, and have some good laughs with us. Um, yeah. Amen. Amen. That's pretty cool. So everybody, everybody. Da, 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 da. Oh, such a good song. Dudes. Um, I just want to preface this video by taking us back in time a little bit and showing us where, why are the Beatitudes where they're at, um, and where, do, how does this all correlate in scripture? Um, so the Beatitudes are actually the fulfillment of an earlier teaching in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy in chapter 28. And basically what happens is it's the Sermon on the Mount. Moses is talking to the Israelites and they have just received the Ten Commandments and Moses is explaining, hey, if you follow the commands of the Lord, then you'll be greatly blessed on earth. Um, were you to disobey these commandments, you'll be greatly chastised on earth. So then the fulfillment comes in John chapter 6, 8. John chapter 8. Uh, Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're all the same, basically. Uh, no, they're not. Okay, anyways. So basically in Luke chapter 8, Jesus is addressing his disciples. Um, and he is giving them these eight beatitudes. Um, and basically from these beatitudes, he is saying, hey, if you follow my commandments, like the teaching, take up your cross and, and follow me, um, then you will be greatly chastised on earth, but reap an eternal harvest in heaven. However, were you to not follow in my ways um, and reap an earthly harvest, there will most likely not be an eternal one waiting for you. Um, so yeah, with that, we're about to decipher each beatitude throughout the weeks. And, and this week in particular, we want to dive in to the beatitude, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Immediately when I thought of this beatitude, um, the classic scripture, it is um, easier for a camel to enter through um, the, the needle point than it is for a rich man to enter through the gates of heaven. Mm. Um for me, it, it looks as though that would be an imagery of this beatitude. Would you agree? I don't think he's saying that like er earthly possessions are bad. I think what he is saying is that <clears throat> we should have an internal disposition of detachment from wealth and also from honor and respect and being attached to that. Um, but I don't know, it does bring up a, a question like, is it better to be poor than rich? Because if it is so difficult for a rich man to enter into heaven, shouldn't everyone who's rich just get rid of all their money? But at the same time, that doesn't seem right. Like, that doesn't seem practical. Mm -hmm. Like, and Catholicism doesn't require that of, of everyone. So. I think it would also go into your own <laughs> sense of self-control. Um. Because a man, like somebody who has struggled with um, 
let's say somebody who loves donuts. Somebody who loves donuts would not benefit from working at a donut factory because he's exposed to donuts all the time and he probably won't have, if he can't even have the self-control at home not to eat donuts, how is he going to not have the self-control with a 75% off employee discount to not eat donuts there? Right. So same, like, I would presume with a rich man, how is a man who can't even control um, not putting his identity in his possessions or his money, um, how can he control not being attached to them? Mm. Right. And both both sides of being wealthy and being poor have temptation in them. Mm. Someone who is poor has the temptation to be constantly thinking about money because they are lacking it. Yeah. And the rich man has the desi- the temptation to be constantly looking for more. There, mm. There's a temptation no matter what monetary status you are at. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is alluring. It is um, something that will tempt us no matter how much is in our bank account or not. Mm-hmm. Either way can cause obsession. Either way can cause us to obsess about it. Yeah. That reminds me, Alexandra, of a story that you were telling me about earlier. Um, when you were, when a woman came into the office or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. 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 So a couple weeks ago, um, before any of this coronavirus stuff happened and the church was still functioning um like normal uh a woman came into the church and basically expressed a bunch of needs that she had um and at that Mm -hmm. point um every other resource that we had wasn't available Mm -hmm. um so I decided um through like my quick little prayer to God like should I do this should I not yeah um I felt like I should take her Um, down to Safeway. So her and I went down to Safeway Mm. um, and we just started grocery shopping. Um, And I granted, I'd never done something like this before. Like Mm -hmm. I've never Mm. even gotten a a burger for a homeless person before. It's just Mm. something that um, I've never done before. So all along I was having conversation with this woman and as we were shopping and as the cart was filling up with all these different items um and the more she was speaking to me the more I felt like I was getting angrier and angrier Mm. like this anger was starting to happen inside me because I was thinking what if she's not telling me the truth what if she's just scamming groceries out of me what if uh, like this isn't yeah what if she's scamming Mm. groceries out of me um and I just realized, like, as I was going on, even though I was doing this charitable act, like, my internal conversation with myself was not being charitable Mm -hmm. at all. And once we got into the checkout line and I saw the total, I was kind of shocked because I've never paid that much for groceries before. It was crazy. And I, before I swiped the card, because there was just, I was getting out my wallet and before I swiped it, I had like this second of hesitancy, but it, I mean, Mm. there was nothing I could do. The groceries were already paid for or in their bags or whatever. Yeah. And I felt God speak to my heart in that moment and just say, Alexandra, that money wasn't yours to begin with. Mm. It's not yours to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that just really, (laughs) that struck me to the core. Mm. That struck me because I had spent all this out like 45 minutes in this grocery store with this woman um and I had let my obsession with money Mm. and with that security take over everything Mm. and and I it wasn't like I was in need of anything it wasn't like buying these groceries was going to gouge me and I wasn't going to be able to afford my own groceries this was coming out of my excess right Mm -hmm. I, I was giving out of my excess I wasn't even giving out of my own need Mm -hmm. um but yet like that's where I truly saw at that moment my kind of obsession with being a miser and saving I've always had that problem Mm -hmm. like growing up I used to be a huge saver anytime birthday money or tooth fairy money I would just save it for no apparent reason and the more I, I see myself as I get older um and become an adult I see it as 
a problem that is tr- my problem is trusting in the Lord and that he will provide for me and that I don't need to try to control this. Mm-hmm. And now I'm not saying go blow your money on whatever and sure. get a ton of credit cards. It's not, that's not being prudent. That's yeah. not being realistic. But you should trust that God's going to take care of you in all <coughs> aspects. Yeah, you know what's interesting? Um, so we're watching the Divine Mercy series, and mm-hmm. Father Gately said that all sin is rooted in some way in a lack of trust in God. Mm. And I don't remember who it was. I think it was St. Augustine who said, like, being poor in spirit comes from being humble. Like, humility and, and spiritual poverty are very, very closely related. So I think part of what it is is, like, yeah, when you're not poor in spirit, you're trying to hoard all this stuff. Mm-hmm because you don't trust that God will take care of you. Right. Which mm-hmm. is a fundamental kind of pride. Mm-hmm. You're not you're not willing to let God take care of you. And at that point, it doesn't matter if you have a what amount is in your bank account. It could be $5,000 or $5. Mm-hmm. Like at that point either way can you could be not trusting in God in either circumstance. Mm-hmm. It, it, it doesn't matter. At that point, anyone um, can be the rich person, mm-hmm. even if they don't have a ton. Does that? Yeah, that actually, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Bishop Barron, in, in one of his videos, he mentioned the phrase, uh, um, what was it? Very interesting phrase. <laughs> you will be happy in the measure that you give yourself to God. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, personally, that... I noticed that um, truth lived out my first year serving with Net Ministries, Mm -hmm. um, National Evangelization Team, it's a mission program I served with for a couple years. Um, And basically my first year I would lose things all the time. A scarf, sweatpants, pens, um, just all these things that I was actually pretty attached to because they didn't let you take too much on the road, so then the little you have becomes what you really love. Precious. Um, yeah. (laughs) So true though. Um, and every time I would lose these things, my, my first reaction would be this physical kind of heartache in a sense. I just, I just remember that physical feeling of, Oh my gosh, I just lost that. How could I be so silly? Um, and get pretty, get a little bit disappointed. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that I would get disappointed so often and my teammates were all very humble and they would, they were good at humility and I wanted to be good at that. Um, And I wanted to be good at detachment. So I challenged myself in those moments when I would feel um, this heartache towards this thing that I lost. I I would say this phrase, um, thank you Lord when you give, bless you still when you take. May all be done for your glory. I don't know if that's a psalm or a song lyric or Zimbabwe. I don't know. But basically what I do know is it. I said it so often because I lost a lot of stuff um, <laughs> that it became innate. It became my natural response to things. Um, and I never realized that those little sacrifices, those, those little moments of saying that prayer would pay off for the bigger issues that I would have to face. Um, and I remember one of the first big issue that I um, like noticed that this prayer helped me was when um, I saw my dog be put down. We, My whole family gathered around and our vet came in and gave my puppy the medicine and, and we all had our hands on her. Her name was Angel, <laughs> fitting because she was a beautiful black lab. Um, and everybody had their hand on this beautiful gift of life um, and just watched it pass away. Um, and in that moment, all of my family, you could just sense the heartache among us. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of that, this thought like just slipped into my mind. Thank you, Lord, when you give, bless you still when you take, may all be done for your glory. And instead of getting depressed and frustrated that I had to watch my dog die, I, I, I became filled with gratitude, gratitude for the gift of this dog, the the peace that um, Angel had brought me in my life, um, the comfort and the security. Um, there's all these things. My my attitude totally changed, and I and that is how I see 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven embodied personally. That's how I see that quote from Bishop Barron. The more you give yourself to God, um, that is the happier you will be. And the same with that relief that you felt once you slipped your credit card in. Mm -hmm. um, it was a sense of peace. Okay, God, yes, I have done your will. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a funny thing. We think we'll be freer if we have all these possessions and stuff in a sense. Mm. But we only succeed in chaining ourselves to it all. In what to it all? Chaining ourselves to it. Oh, chaining. And it's when we let go of it mm -hmm. that we're truly free. Right. Mm. And it doesn't... I don't think um, in this beatitude, Jesus is demonizing money, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at the root word of beatitude, it, it means happy. Mm -hmm. That is where Christ is trying to show us this is where true happiness will lie. It's, it's not saying necessarily that this is evil. Mm -hmm. So you must go live on the streets and that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. Because if you have money, then you possess evil. No, no, mm -hmm. we need money. We need things to run on money. We need money to keep the lights on in the church and yeah. feed the homeless people mm -hmm. and do all these charitable acts. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's the responsibility of the people who possess things mm -hmm. to use them for God's glory. Yeah. And I think um, I was reading, I don't remember which state this was, but he said something along the lines of when you are blessed with a heaven, or uh, what did it say? It said, don't, when you're blessed financially, don't upgrade your lifestyle, upgrade your giving mm -hmm. um, or something like that. Because the Lord wants us to flourish and be happy, as you're saying, but our happiness is not dependent on how much stuff we have or how mm -hmm. fancy it is. It is dependent on how much we are giving ourselves to Him and glorifying Him through what we have and what we do and who we are. And the same thing is true with honor and dignity and respect. <clears throat> if we can hoard that, too, we can use it just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. But the proper end of that is service. So just to clarify... We are not saying wealth is bad in and no. of itself. No. Correct. Okay, yeah. The misuse cool. of it and the obsession and the putting of your identity in it is bad. I'm pretty sure Aquinas defined it as um, detachment from wealth and detachment from honor. Mm. And detachment means detachment from the idea. Not the actual, yeah, not nece not necessarily that you have no thing. honor, that you have no wealth, but yeah. that you are detached from it, or okay. that you use it for good. Yeah, and mm. like like you can use honor for good, you mm -hmm. can use money for great good. Mm. So, how did Jesus live out this beatitude while he was on earth? Well, he died with nothing. So, what about his growing up? Do we know a lot about his growing up? I mean, oh, we get lot. clip it. Mm -hmm. We get snippets. We know, like, his birth, and we know he's visited by three kings. We know, like, his presentation in the temple. And then there's a lot mm -hmm. of time that we don't know. But we can assume that they probably lived in a more frugal situation. It, yeah. it wasn't like his father was a carpenter. Um, yeah, that's true. That didn't make a lot of money. Yeah. Not in the... I actually heard that um, in the Nazarene book or something like that. Okay. Um, it's just like really tiny book that Jesus... Um, well, not really Jesus because he was a kid. But Joseph and Mary decided whenever they would... They would only have enough for what would provide for them that day. And the rest they would give away. Um, be it their money or their actual food. Like if they had more than enough for one portion for each of them. Um they would give it away. So not only did they live frugally, but they lived like incredible, like incredibly impoverished. I'm not sure if that's accurate or who I heard that from, but I, I'm pretty sure that I heard it from that Nazarene book. Yeah, that doesn't sound scriptural. Yeah, I don't think. So. I don't. I wouldn't say that that's from scripture, but it's not. But we have oral tradition, and I think there are some approved apparitions, like to Saint Bridget mm -hmm. or something. <gasps> Confirmation Saint. Which talks. Uh, which she she talked about it. She had visions about the early life of Jesus and stuff. Really? Yeah. I don't know if it was Saint Bridget, but it was some saint. So, what's the benefit of being? Theirs is the kingdom of. I'm sorry. No, I deserve it. So, what's the benefit?
benefit of being poor in spirit, Ronan. Did you have, did you have a comment on that, maybe? Um, yeah, for real, though. I feel like people like to do things when they know there's something in it for them. Granted, that is not the way we should be thinking when pursuing a relationship with Jesus. Um, but I think it's fair to remind the people, what is the benefit of being poor in spirit? What is the benefit of... Um, being willing to offer what you have, what it's whether it's literally what you have, like your wealth, um, and helping somebody pay for groceries, helping, um, like give the Gior- Pier Giorgio Versati, um, blessed right at this point, he uh, he had this story where he was um, his family was super rich and um, I was like when he was rich he would wear really fancy coats and stuff and one day he's walking on the road and saw some man without a coat so. He whipped off his, gave it to him, and his father got pretty mad. Why would you give away this coat that I spent so much money on? Well, he needed it, and I didn't. I had access to another coat, because he probably had tons. Um, so what what is the benefit for, for suffering in this world? Well, the benefit for being poor in spirit, as Jesus yeah, said, in particular, I suppose, yeah. is theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What's interesting is that... Uh, Aquinas said that we actually begin to get the merits of these beatitudes even in time here on earth. So an interesting corollary to that is that we can actually begin to participate in the kingdom of heaven now here on earth if we're poor in spirit. What does that look like? What does that look like? I mean, it looks like the saints. You can kind of tell they already have one foot in heaven. Oh, um, I Like suppose. Mother Teresa, John Paul II. Yes. There's something not quite earthly about them. Like their inner peace in that their they're freedom. kind of uh, radiating, I suppose. Yeah, and oh, yeah. part of that comes from they're they're completely imp- like they have they're completely impoverished in spirit. Like everything they have is God's, and they're just conduits of His love, mm. and that begins to shine through. I think because they're already <laughs> beginning to participate in the life of heaven and mm-hmm. in the peace of heaven. Yeah. Mm. And they're no longer filled because basically when you are bound to these different things, whether it be fame, honor, fortune, whatever, that's binding. That's, Mm -hmm. that's, you don't have any freedom. You you may Mm -hmm. think that you do, like more money will give you more freedom, but yeah, they are free. Something about Lent and and about the quarantine now. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Is I've noticed that with Lent, when I give up the thing which I, I most want to hold on to, whatever it is, say it's watching YouTube, and then I give that up, I feel so much freer when I do that. Did I did I tell you guys the etymology of quarantine? No, no. The etymology of quarantine is uh, like quarantina or something in Italian. It okay. means 40 days. <gasps> what the heck? Oh, yes. that's cool! Because they used to quarantine ships that could possibly be infected with the plague or something for 40 days. Oh, neat. Um, yeah, that is really cool. So it's like we're being called to an extra Lent right now, an extended quarantina, 40 days. Yeah. Um, where we're called to, even, to be even more impoverished, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in a sense, if we use that properly, if we give that to God, I think that we can begin to... To merit the kingdom of heaven more now mm. yeah and i know it's it's scary times for a lot of people yeah people are worried that they won't be able they'll lose their jobs or yeah they aren't bringing in a paycheck or there's just a lot of worry right now mm. like will businesses reopen mm-hmm. and, and when will that be yeah um, do you think it's Fine, praying for, um, praying for providence with, amid like these businesses closing down. Like, Father, can you provide the funds that we might not be the revenue that that's not coming in right now, like to maintain this business? Um, yeah, totally. God yeah, wants yeah. us to ask for stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's that's a big theme in um, in the Chronicles of Narnia, which I think C.S. Lewis hits like the nail on the head. Like, of course he knows what we need, and of course he can give it to us. He just, he wants us to ask. He wants us mm-hmm. to know that we need him because he wants to teach us to trust him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a very important part of this whole poor in spirit thing. 
you must have trust. I, and that's that's where the whole thing starts is when you begin having trust mm-hmm. in God, then you can begin to move forward in the spiritual life because you just need to start saying yes to him and then he will transform you. Like that's our main work is just saying yes to God, giving him that trust so that he can transform us. That's a good point. I, uh, one time I had this image when I was praying. Um, it really had to do with my identity and worth and stuff, but I think it can be applied to possessing Mm -hmm. things um and in my it was kind of like a moving picture image um it was me walking kind of in an alleyway and (laughs) I was holding on to this crown um and it was my crown that Jesus gave me and I got it dirty it had fallen on the ground and I had picked it up and I started like rubbing it really intensely and um trying to get it back to a perfect beautiful crown Um, and as I tried to do that, it fell again and and my anxiety just kept shooting up because this thing that I had just wasn't good enough and I wanted it to be perfect. Um, and as soon as I like stooped down and allowed that second of anxiety to swarm into me, all of these like demons came around me and started taunting me and kind of like, just like busting me around, you know, like pushing me around. Hey, like you can't, you won't get it perfect. It's never going to be good anymore. And as I was fighting to get out of this like boat of demons, I I turn and I see my king right there waiting for me with his arms outstretched, ready to receive this crown, no matter what condition it was in. And so eventually I I bring it to the Lord, stuttering on all my words. I'm sorry, it looks like this and all that. And, And he's like, hey, it's fine. I love you. And he takes the crown and and he goes to put it back on my head, but as he goes to put it on my head, um, it transforms into a two-sided crown. The first is of a crown of thorns, um, and it gets placed onto my head um, so that it stays there, so it's sturdy. And the second part of it, like the top part, is the beautiful, the beautiful, dignified, jeweled, um, just most precious crown that you could have seen. Um, and that's what the world could see. This is a dream? My... Um, just what I was imagining within my prayer that was brought to my mind in regards to this beatitude because um, it takes a lot of suffering and sacrifice in order to give of yourself, give of your possessions, be ready for everything to be taken away at a split second. Um, Because we're not not bringing all this stuff into heaven with us. Mm -hmm. We're hopefully bringing ourselves and a whole boat of other souls with us. Mm -hmm. Um, You know? And The world doesn't need, the suffering is for you to see, um, for you and the king to see. And the crown, the jeweled part, that is for the world to benefit from. Your yes to the Lord, your happiness um, and trust in the Lord. Um, So the people experience peace. Um, When I was, when we were moving, um, when we were moving to a new house, we went through this phase like where we had to really just like scrape by all the money and we would eat spaghetti every single night and uh, I hated it but God bless my mother because she's amazing and um would take the time to make this food for us provide this food for us all of it my parents um and I just remember having to eat the same thing over and over um but my mom would always be like hey did you guys like it um hey we're having spaghetti tonight like she would just get excited about things and be act as though it was normal Act as, though, act as though it was good. In the midst of us having to sacrifice, um, it was my mom's positive demeanor and joy that kept us, <laughs> sorry, that door keeps opening, um, that kept us from that despairing attitude, that woe is me attitude. Um, and why did I say that? Oh yeah, because I think we should have this practical tip on, yes, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt to give sometimes. Give until it hurts. No. Mm -hmm. Keep giving after it hurts. That's like the whole point of the crucifix. If Jesus gave till it hurts, he would have stopped at the first scourge. You know? How can our embracing of this beatitude affect the lives of others? Affect the lives of others. Well, I think it takes us outside of ourselves a bit. I don't know why, but there's something about being attached to possessions which focuses us focuses us on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but I think that's the case. Yeah. 
I keep what keeps coming to mind is um, probably one of the biggest examples to this would be a parent, mm. like exampling this to your children, kind of like what you're saying about your mom, mm. but amidst maybe worry and insecurity and unsure if the next paycheck is going to be coming in, mm-hmm. that's scary. Yeah. That's scary, honestly. It, and I'm not devaluing that at all, but Jesus in those times is calling us to be that example to our children that just how much you trust the Lord. Because hmm. You may say, "Yeah, I, I trust God. Mm-hmm. I trust. I trust you. Everything with. I like. I trust you, Lord. I give you everything." Mm-hmm. But do you really? Do you really trust Him to take care of you and your family? Do you trust that He's not gonna lead you to something that is pointless, mm-hmm. or that He doesn't give us? meaningless suffering he gives us an opportunity to grow and trust in him through suffering Mm. um and i think what i was saying with that is parents that's a huge example to our children and to other parents around you Mm -hmm. what an opportunity to example trust in the lord to example detachment from your bills and your finances and your worries in order to pick up that cross and offer that peace to those around you. Yeah. You know what I think is actually a great example of being poor in spirit is uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm-hmm. when they, you know, when they go into the furnace mm-hmm. because they trust in God, but they they also accept the fact that he might not save them. Right. And they're mm-hmm. fine with that. It's it's a weird kind of trust. You know, because mm-hmm. it's it's like, I, God, I trust in you, but if you want to let me die, that's fine. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. But I think that's actually a good example of being poor in spirit. It's like just completely submitting to the will of God and trusting in whatever He has. Because ultimately, it'll be for our, you know, our best end, even if, even if we do end up dying. Mm. Yeah, and not getting the idea that we mm. own anything, that anything is ours, mm-hmm. that. I worked for this money, therefore it's mine. That was my whole issue yeah. with when I was buying those groceries. Was I was thinking, this is my money that I want to spend for what I want. Yeah. Or I want this security. But God gave me that money to begin with. It's mm-hmm. not mine to begin with. Yes. I think that St. John of the Cross says it best. Um, like, kind of puts all of what we've talked about into this little bubble. It is neither the presence nor the absence of things that indicate true detachment, but rather the interior freedom of heart that puts its trust not in things, possessions, or keeping what we already have or longing for what we don't have, but rather in the Father's care. Mm. You know, God gives us all of these beatitudes so that we can be happy. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing is about wealth is, of course, it's good. You know, like God made, you know, stuff and it, stuff is good. It's not like stuff is inherently evil. What it is, though, is that we fail to have that trust in God. And so we begin to replace, you know, our, our desire, our trust, our need for God with our desire and trust and need for things. Mm. And he wants us to be happy, and there's no way that we could ever be happy just with physical things. You know, we, we have an infinite, we have a God-sized soul. Mm. So, our hearts are restless till they rest, rest in you. you. St. Augustine. Augustine. <laughs> yeah. So he tells us this so that we can rekindle that trust in him, so that we can ultimately be happy and have the ultimate mm. possession, which is God himself. Mm. And only then can we be truly fulfilled and truly happy. Mm-hmm. Boom. Amen. Amen. I like it. That was a good discussion, guys. Way to go. Wow. So, thanks for that. I think um, one of the best conclusions I found was from Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And he said, For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. 
Instead, seek his kingdom, and those things shall be yours as well. The Father knows. Congregation, I invite you to take these words to heart. The Father knows. God knows what you need. He knows that you're struggling, that you're suffering, that you may be feeling anxious or a little detached from the world right now or, or suffering financially. Um, but take heart and know that your God cares about you and that he has not given you more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. Call upon his name and ask for his grace. And I invite you to discern where are you allowing your attachment to lie? Are you attached to your possessions? Does your identity lie in how much money you make? Or does it lie in the Father's arms? Are you attached to the King of the universe, the one who's totally attached to you? So we invite you this week to pray about the beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's end in a prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Sweet Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to learn about this beatitude. Father, we ask you to give us a spirit of poverty and help us not to be afraid of it. We ask that you bless those who are in most financial turmoil in this moment, especially our small town business owners. Jesus, provide for their families in the midst of this quarantine and fill them with hope and with joy. And may all the angels and saints intercede for them and our congregation here at Star of the Sea. Blessed Mother, we consecrate this prayer to you. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah! We are ready! Do, 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 do! All my brothers and sisters and me! My family used to listen to that on the, um... Recorder, or like the, you know what I'm talking about? The uh, recorder. Uh, the, the BTS? No. no. Yes, but we're along the same uh, lines. The tape. The yes, tape. the tape. The, yeah. It, we used to listen to it in the car. CBS? No, not we CBS. We are family. This is a cassette. Oh, this is a cassette tape. Key. That's what it is. Just joking, we didn't do that to it. I just did that because I'm basic and wonderful. And thankful Wait, honor of the Lord. Have I ever told you the song that my family would sing on our record machine? No. What? <laughs> on your, like, when people would call you? Uh -huh. What? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> You have reached the ship, please. <laughs> We're not here at all. Sorry that we stepped out and missed your telephone call. Please leave your name. <laughs> We will call you soon, and we hope that you are well, and may God bless you. Oh my gosh, that was so good! <laughs> yeah. Why didn't our family think of that? That was so funny! Yeah. It kind of sounds like the, um, the Adam family. Yeah, I, it was set to a specific... Not exactly. You guys aren't like the Adam's family, though. So, uh, it's some nursery rhyme tune, but and watched, e that's what it is. It's Sweet Bootsy Square. Yeah, my mom came Ooh. up with that, and she would force us to sing it all around, you know, when it was like the... Way to go, the mama ship, please. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> like, all around the thingy, and, you know, the little... Oh, like, it'd be like, yours, mine, and ours, where they all, like, yell their yes. name out in one time. Yes. Oh, it was cool. like that. It was very embarrassing. Interesting. Yes. Oh, that's fine. Brandon, what'd you guys do? Nothing. No family song? No. What? The well, Austin Dorf. Austin Dorf. Austin Dorf. <laughs> when Austin I was a kid, Austin there was a chant that they would they would do when we were sad, when we were, when we were little ones. Aww. Be like, oh, what was it? Rolling. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Just say it. I can't remember what it was. Did it have your name in it? You said well, Ronan. yeah, yeah, but it would have different people's names in it. So it would be like Brady, da 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 Brady, da da da, mixing it with something. So, boom slam! Thanks for watching, you guys. Happy Palm Sunday. Have a fantastic day. All right, see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Have a good Palm Sunday with your palms. Uh, palm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's do our outro. Can we? Can we? Can we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay.
We're your friendly neighborhood missionaries, signing off. Woo!